Hello friends, I welcome you all again for this lecture on transformation of sentences. In this lecture, I will talk on what is sentence and kinds of sentences. These sentences can be grouped into two categories and they are grouped on the basis of their functions and on the basis of their clauses. Here, I will emphasize on the kinds of sentences on the basis of functions. There are four types of sentences according to their functions and they are declarative sentences, interrogative sentences, imperative sentences and exclamatory sentences. So these four kinds of sentences are on the basis of their functions. These four types of sentences are explained with the help of some examples and here the examples are deliberately taken from the prescribed text because they are important from the examination point of view. The analysis of the various types of sentences, their explanation are by and large same or used from the text. So I hope you will enjoy it, you will like it. Before we talk about kinds of sentences, it is important to know what is sentence. There are several definitions of the word sentence. Here, I have used the meaning of the word sentence given in an Oxford dictionary. According to them, sentence is a set of words expressing a statement, a question or an order, usually containing a subject and a word. And in written English, sentences begin with a capital letter and end with a full stop or a question mark or an exclamation mark. One thing you should remember that sentence is the biggest or largest unit of a language. It has its own complete meaning. It has its own complete sense. So it is complete in itself. It has its own independent meaning. Uh, sentences can be grouped in two different ways. According to the number of clauses they contain and also according to the use they are put to. Clauses are groups of words containing a subject and a finite word which appear not independently but as a part of a larger sentence and according to the number of clauses there are four types of sentences they are simple sentence compound sentence complex sentence and compound complex sentence just like on the basis of the number of clauses sentences have in them we can also classify sentences on the basis of their use or on the basis of the functions and according to the function of the sentences there are four types of sentences and they are declarative sentence interrogative sentence imperative sentence and exclamatory sentences here I will mainly focus on the kinds of sentences on the basis of their function and we'll talk about some examples of these kinds of sentences. The first type of sentence according to the function or use is declarative sentence or it is also called assertive sentence. Declarative or assertive sentences are used to make statements in order to give information, uh, report events or express an opinion or make a promise. 
they all are statements and they have the common pattern and the pattern is subject verb and object here are some examples of declarative or assertive sentences the first example is sunil went to pune second is the giraffe has a long neck and third is it rained all night fourth is we like sweets and the last is i will meet you tomorrow in all these examples in all these sentences you could see that they begin with capital letters and end with full stop they all are statements again they have subject verb and object pattern and all these sentences are made for different purposes if you see the first sentence sunil went to pune now it is giving us an information information about sunil and what is the information that sunil went to pune the second sentence the giraffe has a long neck it again gives us an information about giraffe and what is the information that giraffe has a very long neck so both the sentences they are statements and they are made in order to give us an information they are giving us an information about sunil and also giving us something about giraffe the third sentence it rained all night so it it again begins with capital letter and it ends with full stop and if you see its purpose or function you could notice that it is uh, reporting us and what it is reporting us it is telling us about last night raining how it was rained heavily last night so it reports us an event and the event is raining the third sentence is um the next sentence is we like sweets now here uh it is again a statement and it express your opinion and the opinion is that we like sweets and the last one is i will meet you tomorrow just like other sentences it is also a statement and it begins with capital letter and it ends with full stop it has again the same pattern subject verb and object but if you see its use or function it gives us a promise and the promise is that i will meet you tomorrow so if you see all these five sentences uh you could notice that all these five sentences are used to perform different functions either they are giving us an information they are reporting an event expressing an opinion or making a promise so if they are performing all these purposes they are declarative sentence or they are called assertive sentences so you should remember these four different purposes of an assertive sentence or declarative sentence they are you know that giving information or reporting events expressing an opinion or make a promise the second type of uh, sentence according to the function is interrogative sentence interrogative sentences uh, which end with a question mark are used to ask questions or make inquiries they are of two types they are yes no type questions or wh questions now if you see yes no type question sentences uh, they can be answered with either yes or no so these questions always begin with an auxiliary verb such as have or has may is are 
or was or where and do if the corresponding declarative sentence does not contain an auxiliary verb the wh questions call for a detailed and specific answer they begin with the wh word like who who whose when where why which what and how so if you see all the examples given below where did raju go how many of you have brought the textbook why don't you give him some money are you going to pune was this your favorite film or have they given you all the answers one common thing you could notice at the end of all these sentences and that is they end with a question mark and you know that they are either asking questions or they are making some kind of an inquiries where did raju go now it is inquiring about raju how many of you have brought the textbook it is also inquiring or it inquires that how many of you have the textbook even why don't you give him some money so all these three sentences they make some kind of an inquiry and if it inquires and ends with a question mark it is an interrogative sentence if you see the remaining three sentences are you going to pune and here if you want to answer this question answer may be either yes or no or even the next sentence was this your favorite film the answer could be yes or no and in the last sentence have you have they given you all the answers answer could be yes or no so in all these three questions the answer is either yes or no so all these are questions because they end with question marks but answer is either yes no yes or no or you could have a detailed answer of these questions and such kind of sentences are called interrogative sentences you should remember one thing that they always end with question mark you could easily find out interrogative sentences with the help of questions or question mark which are used at the end of the sentences and they perform two functions two purposes and they are either asking questions or making some kind of an inquiries the third type of sentence according to the function is imperative sentence and these imperative sentences are used to give orders or instructions or make a request and to give advice they always begin with the basic form of the verb and that is the present tense form although uh, they do not have explicit subjects in the surface structure the subject you is always implied or it is always hidden because the imperatives are addressed to the second person and this second person could be you so sentences that begin with let are also imperative sentences where the order or the suggestion is indirectly expressed we have this word let look at the examples below open the door give me a glass of water please boil water in an open pan or take care of your sprained ankle or let's get a set of new curtains for the house so here if you see all these are imperative sentences because they are used to give orders or some kind of instructions open the door it is an order 
give me a glass of water please or boil water in an open pan so here they are either giving an order or telling you something to do take care of your sprained ankle so it is an advice or it is an instruction let's get a set of new curtains for the house again it's an instruction so if the sentences are used to give an order or instructions they are called imperative sentences they are also used to make a request or to give an advice and if you see the way that they all begin open give boil take they all are verb and one common thing is that all these verbs they are in the present tense they are in their basic form so here all these sentences they begin with verb we could not see the subject we could not find the subject but though it is not seen explicitly in the surface structure of the sentence it is there it is implied or it is hidden and the subject you is always there in all these sentences so here if you see the first sentence open the door it is giving an order to somebody and who is somebody or who could be somebody it must be you so here in all these sentences the subject you is always hidden or it is always implied it is always in the sentence though it is not given explicitly in the surface structure of the sentence and sometime they also begin with the word let the last sentence let's get a set of new curtains for the house so it is the order or the suggestion and you know that this order or the suggestion is expressed indirectly so if the sentence is giving an order if the sentence is giving an instruction or making a kind of a request or giving an advice they are called imperative sentences and one common criteria for knowing all these imperative sentences is that they all begin with the verb and these verbs are in their present tense the fourth type of sentences according to the function is exclamatory sentence all the exclamatory sentences are used to express surprise or pain or joy or sorrow or admiration or pity and other feelings so these types of sentences are used to express different kinds of spontaneous or sudden feelings of human being and they always end with an exclamation mark look at the examples given below how happy i am to be here how sad it is to see you here what a wonderful performance how very unfortunate for you look who is here ouch that hurts your story was so exciting so in all these sentences the common part is they all end with an exclamation mark and they are expressing different kinds of human feelings or emotions they are your spontaneous responses your sudden emotions you are either surprised or you have feeling of pain or joy or sorrow admiration or you are feeling sorry or pity for others such kinds of purposes or functions are performed by exclamatory sentences and one important thing 
to notice all these exclamatory sentences is that they always end with an exclamation mark. So these were the four kinds of sentences on the basis of the functions, on the basis of the use of them. And these four kinds of sentences can be transformed or changed into other kinds. While some transformations lead to a change in meaning, or there are others that do not change. So how these different kinds of sentences are transformed into others, we'll talk about it in the next lecture. I hope you would have enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much for watching it. Have a nice time.